this is my first episode of my My Street or slash and MCD What If. I definitely, definitely was inspired by Marvel's What If. Don't, don't judge me. Today's alternate reality was asked for by this lovely person in the comments. The alternate reality in question is, what if Travis wasn't born? Oh, also in the background of this video, I will just be playing Minecraft because I didn't really have anything to do Will you listen to me talk about this alternate reality that I created. Okay, jumping right into things, we'll start in the very beginning. Well, the beginning of where we see Travis. Forever potion testing. Everything's the same other than Travis being there. Caitlin and Garth are still tested on. Zach, Elizabeth, and the Demon Warlock are still banished to that pocket dimension realm thingy. Next in the timeline events of Travis is high school. Still, the changes aren't big. Instead of Travis being the person Aphmau uh, forces herself to talk to, on her first day, it was Kwai Chan sitting next to her. Aphmau still becomes friends with the same people, although she doesn't become as close to Dante as in the original timeline. And we get to college, and there's no changes, because Travis wasn't relevant there. I don't even think he was mentioned in that season. Poor man. Season 1. Aphmau, Kwai Chan, Caitlin move in together. Across the street from them, Garth, Dante, and Lawrence move in together. Aphmau and Zane eventually comes friends after he steals Christmas. With, and after New Year's, the boys are in debt because Garth bought too many feathers. So, Dante decides they need a new roommate. But with Travis not existing in this universe, who does he ask to be his roommate? No other than his brother, Gene. Aphmau and Gene make up and become friends much earlier in this timeline because... I mean, he's there. We get to the Valentine's Day episode, and Caitlin is feeling super, super lonely. She, deep down, she doesn't have anyone to go with, so you know what? She, she thinks, you know what? I'm just going to do it. She calls up her ex from college, Luca. Luca and Caitlin actually end up getting back together. The ending of the season is still the same with Aphmau and Aaron, getting together. Season 2, Love, Love, Paradise. When the group gets the tickets for Love, Love, Paradise, no one's left behind this time. Jean and Luca also go to Love, Love, Paradise with them. In this reality, Tioni and Ivy are still on the island. Sylvana and Eric are also still there. Uh, when Caitlin sees that her dad is there, she gets a bit nervous about telling him that she has a girlfriend. But when she does, everything's fine because Eric is a good person, so nothing goes wrong. Time goes by and the summer ends. No real changes other than Luca and Caitlin are there and so Travis and Caitlin. And sadly, very, very sadly, the wonderful why are you buying clothes at the soup store moment never happened. Because Jean was already with them. There was no reason for him to make that phone call. And another thing on the plus side, though, is... uh. Garth, Dante, Lawrence, and Jean's house is not been blown up because Travis is not there to blow it up. Season 3, Lover's Lane. The group returns just in time to see their house is blown up. So sad. And then things kind of happen the same until it's time to get new homes. Aphna and Aaron still move in together. Lawrence and Garth move in together. Dante moves in with Jean. Makes sense. And then Caitlin and Luca end up living together in this reality. Lucinda still wants to live alone, and now so is Kwai Chan. Now her only company is when she stares through that big window leading right into Aphmau and Aaron's bedroom. <sighs> she, she, she needs help. The season goes on pretty much the same, other than there's not many big changes. Aphmau and Kwai Chan still open their cafe together. Uh, but Aphmau and Aaron never break up at the end of the season because Jean's too 
you know, busy doing other things to, like, plot with uh, Melissa and Michi, the only bad thing Melissa's ever done. And then Garth and Stu- Kim still become friends, and Aaron is still has his proposal plan. Season 4, Emerald Secrets. It made you cry. Made me cry. Didn't make my sister cry, because she's a soulless husk of a person. But it's pretty much unaffected by the changes here, because, you know, Travis wasn't really relevant in that season. And except for the flashback at the end of the season, with, you know, all the kids there. It just It's the same, just Travis isn't there. Season 5, Starlight. She tricked us with thinking that things would get better. They got so much worse. Everyone from the Lodge, plus Kawaii-chan, go to Starlight. But because Travis is not here, Caitlin is not dating Travis. Because Caitlin is not dating Travis, her Travis's dad, Terry, does not invite her to the island. Caitlin is not on the island. But Eric and Silvana are still on the island. Again, not many things are changed I mean, there's some things with, like, Lucinda breaking into uh, Terry's house because of the book. And in this, I forgot to write this down, but the book was stolen, not by Travis. It was just Terry who stole the book. Uh, well, Michael in Terry. Um, but everything else pretty much just goes the same. No big events. Garth have now still become werewolves. Aaron still proposes. And the Ultima Secret is still revealed. Oh, and, uh, yes, Zane and Kwai-chan still get together. And now we move on to the ever-so-traumatic season six, When Angels Fall. It's, it's gonna get going downhill from now. The group has been forced out of their resort house and are hiding in a penthouse in, like, the, I don't know, what is a city area, hotel area, I guess where the less rich people go when they go to the island, I guess that's what that is. And Michael slash the Demon Warlock still has the same plan to make Aaron into a relic. Everything goes pretty this, pretty much the same. They still go to the casino ball thing. Uh, and the Guardian forces attack. Everyone is split into the same groups. Aaron with Kwai Chan. Melissa still gets shot. Hooray. Um, and then Zane and Aphmau. And then Kim, Lucinda, and Garth. And, um... And then we just don't see any of Caitlyn and Travis because they're just not there. Events happen pretty much the same with Derek turning himself in. And sorry, my papers keep blowing because my fan is on. Um, yeah, until we get up to uh, Too Late Part 2, you know, episode that made everyone cry. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I'm going to make it worse. Um, so, Aphmau is still killed by Ian. Lucinda and Kim are sneaking into the Guardian Forces headquarters to ambush Michael and question him. When Lucinda uses her entrapment spell thing on the Demon Warlock, he has nowhere to go. So he can't just go into Travis because, you know, Travis doesn't exist. So he's trying to fight her spell to get back into Terry. So he can eliminate the people who ambushed him. Garth finds Zane and they run into the old resort house and find Kwai Chan there. Uh, Aaron had ran off because Daniel came to warn him, and yeah. So Aaron's running back with Aphmau to the house. Kim and Imlyn are questioning Terry while Lucinda fights to hold the spell. Suddenly, the demon warlock breaks the spell and takes control of Terry once again. Now that he's ready, the demon warlock starts attacking Kim and Lucinda with really, like, dangerous, powerful magic stuff. Aaron makes it back to the house with Aphmau barely holding on to life. And we all know how this ends, except that this time, Aphmau's death is witnessed by a few more of her friends. Kim and Lucinda are barely withstanding the Demon Warlock's attacks. Lucinda decides that if they keep fighting, her and Kim will definitely lose. Lucinda teleports herself and Kim away, but she's a little too late. Just as they teleported, the Demon Warlock hit Lucinda with a powerful magic blast. Lucinda had teleported her and Kim right into the others. Everyone scrambled around to see what had happened. Kim wakes up, but Lucinda does not. After the loss of two friends, Aaron runs off to get revenge. Garth chases after him, trying to stop him. 
Aaron confronts Ian on the bridge as Garth watches at the distance, horrified. When Michael notices Garth hiding behind a tree, he takes his chance and snaps his fingers. Garth is now under Michael's control. After, Il after Aaron kills Ian, the Demon Warlock has Garth fight him alone. Aaron is captured. Garth is severely injured. Everyone back at the house is devastated. Lucinda and Aphmau were dead. Aaron was captured and Garth was under Michael's control. Kim knew that the Demon Warlock had to be stopped, but she had no idea how. That's when she saw it. A brief place, leaning against the wall. Inside was a small, round object. Kim had no clue what it was, but Emmeline did. Emmeline explained to everyone that that was the Realm Breaker, and it, I mean, it, it does what it says it does. It breaks through realms. Pretty explanatory name. Still, even with the Realm Breaker, everyone thinks that there's no way that a bunch of early 20s, late 20s people are going to be able to stop this thousand-year-old eldritch demon man. You know, like a, a pretty, like, reasonable he people do. That's when a miracle happens. Aphmau spring springs up, gasping for air. Everyone around j couldn't believe what just happened. After Aphmau woke up, a new sense of hope spread throughout the group. As they made their plan, they kept glancing over at Lucinda's body, hoping, just hoping the miracle would happen again. But it did not. The plan was complete, and the time to act was now. The group hopped on a boat, headed for the center island. Once there, the cannon started to rise into the air. As they search for a way in, Garth appears. His prior injuries still untreated. He was limping on one of his legs. There was also a large gash on his left arm, going from his shoulder to his wrist. In the following fight, a hole was broken into the floor. Zane and Kwai Chan stay behind to fight Garth as the rest of the group head on. When they reach the center room, Aphmau sees ashes on the floor, assuming they're errands, and they were too late. She breaks down and starts to cry. Then she feels something. She realizes Aaron is still alive. She can feel his presence, but just barely. They use the Realm Breaker to rescue Aaron from the void. I think that's what it's called. Don't C correct me if I'm wrong. After minutes of trial and error, Zane and Kwai Chan are finally able to find the trigger words to release Garth from the Forever Potion's effects. With that done, they meet up with the rest of the group. Then the Demon Warlock uses the cannon to take the souls of the whole island. Zane realizes they need to fight fire with fire. Agent R and Toby appear and tell them that the girl with raven-colored hair was the key to success. Aphmau agrees to hold the relics. Now the question was, who would become relics? Kim was needed to use Lucinda's spell to trap Michael slash the demon warlock in place. Garth volunteers, but he's too injured and no one will let him. In the end, the relics are Aaron, Zane, and Kawhi Chan. Despite the others' re objections and rejections, Garth volunteers to be a distraction. He runs up there before anyone can stop him. Garth's plan works, and he was able to distract the demon warlock long enough for them to use the cannon. When the demon warlock realizes what happened, he got mad. Real mad. And he took that anger out on Garth. Aphmau appears with relics in hand, and the final battle ensues. After it's all done and over, Kim rushes over to help Garth up, only to find he isn't breathing. Her, her morning is cut short by the cannon shaking and leaning to the right a little. If they didn't leave now, none of them would get off this cannon. Zane, Kwai Chin, and Aaron are converted back from relics, and Kim teleports everyone off the cannon. Once they're safe, they learn what happened. Zane couldn't remember anyone's names. Kwai Chin couldn't remember anything except for Zane, and Aaron lost all his memories. 
and was blinded permanently. They had won, but at what cost? Okay, everyone, that is it for my first What If video for my street. And tell me what you thought of this alternate reality I've created in my comments. What do you think? Better or worse than the original timeline? Also, if you have any suggestions for other what ifs, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you. Bye.